Today's briefing is a part of a serious government updates since the 18th CPC National Congress. It comes ahead of the 20th National Congress, which is expected to convene on October the 16th. Welcome to this briefing session. Held by the Publicity Department of the CPC Central Committee. Today's briefing is the 30th years of the series named China in the past decade. We are glad to have with us the Minister of Water Resources, Mr. Li Guoying, and brief you on China's achievements in water conservancy work after the 18th CPC National Congress. Also here with us today are. Director General of the Planning Department of the Ministry of Water Resources, Mr. Zhang Xiangwei, DG of Rural Water Conservancy and Hydropower Department, Mr. Chen Mingzhong, DG of Disaster Prevention Department, Mr. Yao Wenguang. First, we give the floor to Minister Li. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media, good morning. I'm glad to brief you on China's water resources and its conservancy after the 18th CPC National Congress. I'm genuinely thankful of your long-standing support for and interest in China's water conservancy work. China is a country with limited water resources. We suffer from seasonal and regional imbalances and frequent floods and droughts. This makes China a country with the most difficult task in terms of water management and conservation. The Party Central Committee, where the comrade Xi Jinping at its core, attach great importance to water conservancy. After the 18th CPC National Congress, General Secretary Xi Jinping, mindful of the sustainable development of the entire Chinese nation, set out a policy framework that prioritizes water conservation, balances spatial distribution, adopts a systemic approach and involves both government and market efforts. He put forth two development strategies for Yangtze River and the Yellow River and launched the major national water network projects. In this way, General Secretary Xi Jinping provided strategic guidance and a roadmap for China's water conservancy work in the new era. It is of a milestone significance in the history of water management of the Chinese nation. With General Secretary Xi Jinping at the helm, and guided by the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, our country is able to tackle water challenges with focused efforts. We've been able to solve many long-standing challenges that were not dealt with in the past and achieve multiple major goals that bears on the strategic picture, long-term development, and people's well-being. It is fair to say that uh, we've made historic achievements and transformation in water conservancy work. To elaborate, in the past decade, our ability to guard against flood and drought is brought onto a new level. We acted on the disaster prevention, relief, and response philosophies. 
put people's lives at the center of everything we do and improved uh, flood prevention system. We enhanced forecast, early warning, disaster drills and preparedness and operated uh, water projects in a fine-tuned fashion. In this way, we've been able to contain uh, severe flooding events in the Yellow River, Yangtze River, Huaihe River, Haihe River, Pearl River, Songhua River, China's Liaohe River, and Taihu Lake and other major water bodies. In the recent decade, the annual damage caused by floods as a share of China's GDP dropped to 0.31%, compared to 0.57% in the previous decade. Since 2021, we saw a mega flood in the upstream of the Heilongjiang River and uh, autumn flood on a scale rarely seen in the lower reaches of uh, Yellow River, and a flood of a rarely seen scale in Pearl River. Nationwide, large and medium-sized reservoirs contained 8,135 flood events, the volume totaling 222.2 billion cubic meters. Twelve national flood storage areas were put into use, reducing 3,055 flooding events, and spread 26,320 square kilometers of arable land, and avoiding the relocation of 21 million people. Meanwhile, severe droughts in the Pearl River Basin and other regions are effectively relieved providing basic water supply in this uh, year of an extraordinary drought. In 2022, in the face of the most severe drought in the Yangtze River Basin since 1961, we adopted precise measures in a limited scope and carried out a special action for drought relief and water supply of the reservoirs in the Yangtze River Basin to ensure safety of drinking water for 13.85 million people and meet the irrigation needs of um, 19,000 square kilometers of autumn grain crops. In the past decade, the long-standing problem of drinking water safety in rural areas is resolved. Drinking water safety in rural areas is a key indicator for eradicating absolute poverty in China. With this firmly in mind, we ensured the safe drinking water for 17.1 17 million people who used to live below the poverty line and provided safe drinking water to 280 million rural residents over the past decade and provided tap water in 84% of the rural regions, thus solving the problem of drinking water that has troubled generations of Chinese farmers. Irrigation projects has made a huge progress. 7,330 large and medium-sized irrigation districts have been built, and the effective irrigated area reached 691,000 square kilometers. Three-quarters of grain crops and more than 90% of economic crops is grown on irrigated farmland, which accounts for less than 54% of total arable land. This has laid a solid foundation for China's food safety and food security. In the past decade, utilization of water resources has gone through a transformation. Guided by a policy that prioritizes conservation, China implemented a nationwide water conservation action, introduced rigid 
constraints of water usage and promoted efficient utilization of water. In 2021, the water consumed per 10,000 yuan of GDP and per 10,000 yuan of industrial added value went down by 45% and 55% respectively compared to a decade ago. And the effective utilization coefficient of agricultural irrigation went up from not 516 to not 0.5. 568 in, in the past decade, China's total water consumption has remained stable. With 6% of the world's fresh water, China is able to feed a fifth of the world's total population and produce over 18% of global economic output. In the past decade, the distribution of water is optimized. We've accelerated a number of major water diversion projects and key water supply projects. The first phase of the east and middle route of the south-north water diversion project was finished and put in operation, supplying 56.5 billion cubic meters of water as of now, benefiting 150 million people. We've commenced a range of other projects, namely transferring water from Yangtze River to Hanjiang River, water transfer from central Yunnan province, water diversion from Yangtze River to Huaihe River, the Pearl River Delta water allocation projects, large reservoirs in Guizhou and Tibet provinces, among many others. And as such, a secure, reliable, efficient, green, smart, smooth and well-regulated national water network has taken shape. The national water supply capacity has gone up from 700 billion cubic meters to 890 billion cubic meters in the past decade. Over the past 10 years, the condition of rivers and lakes have been significantly improved. Guided by the philosophy that uh, lush mountain and clear water are invaluable assets, we promoted protection and management of watershed environment. The system of river and lake chiefs is put in place across the country. 1.2 million river and lake chiefs at various levels have taken up their duties. We launched the Mother River Rehabilitation Action and groundwater levels in North China went up markedly. Levels of shallow groundwater and deep pressurized water in rehabilitated areas rose 1.89 meters and 4.65 meters respectively compared to 2018 levels. Bayondian ecosystem is restored. Yongding River and other rivers that have dried up for several years were rehabilitated. The Beijing-Hangzhou Grand Canal opened to navigation for the first time in the last century. In the past decade, a total of 580,000 square kilometers of soil erosion areas have been restored, and the area and intensity of water and soil erosion reduced nationwide. As a result, barren mountains are starting to turn green. More and more ecologically damaged rivers have been restored, delivering substantial benefits to the people. Over the past decade, water management capacity has undergone systematic improvements. We've strengthened law-based management of institutions and mechanisms governing water resources stepped up coordinated planning, governance, operation, and management of the water basins, and worked 
to bring up to date the water management system and capacity. The Yangtze River Protection Law, groundwater management regulations, and other important laws and regulations are promulgated, and synergy between administrative law enforcement, criminal justice, public interest, litigation, and prosecution is enhanced. In 2022, 238.8 billion yuan went into water-related projects, a record high. The construction of digital twins of water networks and water conservancy projects have picked up speed, and more leading technologies are developed. Going forward, the Ministry of Water Resources will continue to follow the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, deliver on the new development philosophy in a full, accurate, and comprehensive fashion, act on the policy framework that prioritizes water conservation, balances spatial distribution, adopts a systematic approach and involves both government and market efforts. We at the Ministry of Water Resources will work for the high-quality development of China's water conservancy in the new era and contribute our share to building China into a modern socialist country. Thank you. Now is the question and answer session. Please if, announce your affiliation before you raise your question. Hello, I'm with the CCTV. By 2018, by the end of 2018, I recall that uh, a lake and river chief system is established. And almost uh, four years on, what have been achieved in this regard? The river and lake chief system is personally deployed and promoted by General Secretary Xi Jinping. It is a major reform measure. It is officially approved by the Central Party Committee, and it is a major institutional innovation. In November 2016, the offices of the CPC Central Committee and the State Council have issued the opinion on fully implementing the river and lake chiefs system. In December, the two offices have issued the opinion on the establishment of lake chiefs. This innovative system is to uphold the fundamental interests of the people. The purpose is to solve the most direct and realistic problems of water disasters, water resources, water ecology, and water environment that the people are most concerned about. So the establishment of this system and its implementation has received the support by the governments and the general public. 
Since its inception and implementation, we have seen remarkable progress in at least three areas. First, the water governance management system has been improved. At the national level, the inter-ministerial joint meeting system for the comprehensive implementation of the river and lake chief system has been established. Officials from the state council are the key officials in charge of this meeting system. This helps coordinate national efforts. At the basin level, joint meetings of provincial river and lake chiefs have been established for the Yangtze River, Yellow River, Huai River, Hai River, Pearl River, Songhua River, Liao River, and Tai Lake. The offices have been set up at the respective basin management agencies. This is to strengthen coordination and cooperation of upstream and downstream left and right banks and trunk and tri tributaries. At the regional level, river chiefs' offices have been set up at the provincial, municipal, and county levels. The purpose is to set up a coordinated and integrated working mechanism within the area. To forge synergy for water governance. Second, the responsibility system has been established. The and the party leadership is taking the core is taking up the core role. Now, leading officials in 31 provinces of China serve as, as provincial river chiefs. At provincial, municipal, county, and township level, a total of 300,000 river and lake chiefs have been appointed, and more than 900,000 village level river and lake chiefs have been appointed. So, each and every river and lake in China is protected by these chiefs. Third, the appearance of rivers and lakes has undergone historic changes. In face of Problems such as water disasters, water resources, water ecology, uh, ecology and water environment. We have taken targeted measures according to local conditions. Take forceful measures to resolve the problems and protect water resources, improve water ecology, and tackle water pollution. More and more rivers have 
returns to life and become a source for people's happiness. Thank you. Accelerating the construction of water conservancy infrastructure is a matter of strategic overall situation and people's well-being. Since the 18th Party Congress, China has deployed more than 100 water conservancy projects. Since this year, the Ministry of Water Resources has redoubled its efforts in this area. So. What role has water infrastructure system has played in promoting China's high quality economic and social development? Thank you for your question. The Party Central Committee and the State Council set great store by water conservancy infrastructure. After the 18th CBC Congress, 172 and 100 50 major water conservancy projects were launched subsequently. In the past decade, a total of 6.66 trillion yuan in investment went into water conservancy. It is five times that of the previous decade. A number of key flood control projects were launched namely in the Yangtze River Basin, the lower reaches of the Yellow River, the Datang Gorge Water Conservancy Hub of the Xijiang River, and more. Management of small and medium-sized rivers is stepped up. Potentially hazardous reservoirs have gone through rehabilitation. And 105.1 billion cubic meters of reservoir capacity and 565,000 kilometers of embankments above level 5 is added. A flood control system of river channels, levees and dams, reservoirs and flood storage areas are put in place for nearly all major rivers, thus playing an important role in protecting people's safety and property as well as major infrastructure. Meanwhile, 54 cross-basin and cross-region water diversion projects have been built, including the Phase 1 of the South-North Water Diversion Middle Route, water diversion from Yangtze River to Huaihe River, and from Hanjiang River to Weihe River. This year, to follow up on General Secretary Xi Jinping's important speech at the 11th meeting of the Central Finance and Economics Commission, and to firmly implement the State Council's policy package to stabilize the economy, we at the Ministry of Water Resources accelerated the construction of water infrastructure and made significant strides in starting new projects, attracting investments and adding jobs. First, we started more projects than previous periods. In 2022, 19,000 new water projects were launched, and it's a record. In particular, a number of projects of strategic importance were started, including the Phase 2 of the Huaihe River Waterway, the middle route of the South-North Water Diversion Project, and more. These are projects that, that are well studied in the past and uh, been on the schedule for quite some time, but uh, were not put into construction. But um, uh, they were launched uh, this year. Second, the level of investment reached a record high. In addition to government investment, local government bonds, financial support, social capital all help to diversify water conservancy investment. From January to August, Water Conservancy construction investment reached a trillion yuan, up by 
50.9%, compared to the same period last year. The investment used reached 706.3 billion yuan, an increase of 63.9%. Third, we've, able, we've been able to add a large number of jobs. Water conservancy projects involve many links of the industrial chain and creates a large number of jobs. From January to August, the construction of water conservancy projects added a total of 1.91 million jobs. Large-scale water projects has played an important role in stabilizing economic growth and adding job opportunities. Next question, please. Water conservancy has to do with many aspects of our lives. The report of the 19 CPC Congress set forth a national water conservation action making this action a national plan that involves each and every one of us. What are the actions to promote this action plan? Thank you for your question. National Water Conservation Action is an important task set forth as the 19 CPC Congress. After rele the release of the National Water Conservation Action Plan, we at the Ministry led 20 departments and established an interagency coordination mechanism for water conservation. And we've been able to do a good job. The six key actions is making a steady progress. It involves putting restraint on intensity and volume of water use stepping up efficiency, reducing water waste, and water conservancy in urban areas, and making technological innovation. We've been able to make progress on all these fronts. And the reforms are deepened at institutional and mechanism levels. The legal safeguards is strengthened, and our ability to act is improved. Now, all 31 provinces have issued a meeting mechanism, interagency coordination mechanism to implement uh, this action plan. And through implementing action plan, the efficiency and effectiveness of the water utilization has been improved significantly. Chinese people's awareness of water conservation has grown significantly. During the 13th five-year plan period, more than 80,000 square kilometers of high-efficiency water-saving irrigation area were added. The water-saving transformation in industry sector has made steady progress. The recycle rate of industrial water of above-scale industries is over 92%. And 99% of the above-scale industrial enterprises in water-scarce areas now plan their use of water. We work to make cities save more water. All water scarce cities at the prefecture level and above have reached the national water saving city standards. We promoted the inclusion of unconventional water sources into the allocation of water 
We've carried, we've introduced the use of recycled water in pilot regions. The use of um, unconventional water went up in the past decade. In 2021, the total national water consumption was controlled within uh, below 610 billion cubic meters. Water consumption per 10,000 yuan of GDP was uh, 50 point. 8 cubic meters. Water consumption per 10,000 yuan of industrial added value stood at 28.2 cubic meters. The effective utilization coefficient of irrigation water increased to not uh, 0.568 over the decade. And going forward, we will fully leverage the role of the interagency coordination mechanism, step up a departmental and local coordination, and carry on with the National Water Conservation Action, and work for greater progress in saving a precious water. Next question, please. With the Xinhua News Agency, our country has a, a bad problem of water and soil erosion. We would like to know about uh, the progress China made in tackling this challenge. Since the 18th Party Congress, Water Conservancy departments at all levels have implemented Xi Jinping's thought on ecological civilization, practiced the concept that clear waters and green mountains are as valuable as gold and silver, and promoted the comprehensive management of soil erosion. China's soil erosion continues to show the trend of double decrease in area intensity and in water and wind erosion. In 2021, the national soil erosion area is 2.6 million square kilometers, a decrease of 274,000 square kilometers compared with 2011, and the percentage of strong and above grades dropped to 18.93%, with the soil conservation rate reaching 72%. This decade has been the decade in which China's soil erosion control has been the strongest, the fastest, and the most effective, and has laid a solid foundation for the construction of ecological civilization. Over the past decade, we have been, we have been preventing and protecting the incremental quantity, supervised and guided, 500,000 production and construction projects. And we have effectively prevented and controlled the incremental quantity of soil erosion. We have treated a total of 580,000 square kilometers of soil and water erosion. Adhering to the people-first approach, we have integrated soil erosion control with the enhancement of agricultural production capacity and the development of special industries. Special industries such as Gansu Dingxi potatoes, Jiangxi Gannan oranges, and Shanxi apples have been cultivated. A total of more than 10 million poor people nationwide have benefited from soil erosion control, increasing annual income by about 5 billion yuan. More and more areas have transformed from turbid water and barren mountains to grain, mountain, and clear water, which generated profits. Entering the new development stage, we should implement the new development philosophy, speed up the reform and innovation of institutional mechanisms, strengthen the soil and water conservation, supervision and management, and promote the comprehensive grain transformation of economic and social development, promote the comprehensive management of soil and water erosion, build ecological small watersheds, recover the ecological environment of rivers and lakes, improve the quality and stability of the ecosystem, and provide more and better quality soil and water conservation ecological projects to provide strong support for the construction of a beautiful China.
，谢谢主持人。综合网记者提问，呃，近年随着流域防洪抗旱工程体系不断完善，我们感受到。Of、uh, the drought prevention system, we've、uh, find that people have greater confidence in this area. Can you tell us what have we achieved in drought prevention? And this year, we've experienced the very severe drought. And what are the progress? Thank you. 好，这个题目，请龚广同志回答。谢谢您的提问。近十年来，水利部积极借鉴习近平书记两个坚持、三个转变。The, decade, the Ministry of Water Resources firmly follows General Secretary Xi Jinping's five important instructions on disaster prevention, mitigation, and relief. We resolutely implement the decisions and plans of the Party Central Committee. The State Council made. Unremitting efforts. In terms of a project building a flood control system, of river channels, levees and dams, reservoirs and flood storage areas are in place for nearly all major rivers. We are able to deal with flood on a scale equivalent to the biggest one that has occurred since the founding of New China. The annual water supply capacity of National Water Conservancy projects reached 890 billion cubic meters. And through comprehensive measures, we can ensure the safety of urban and rural water supply and mitigate losses. In terms of, in terms of um, non-project building measures, the monitoring and early warning capability are significantly improved. The number of uh, monitoring sites went up from 70,000 uh, to 120,000 in the past decade. The data collection time shortened by half, and the accuracy rate of flood forecasts in China's southern and northern regions went above 90% and 70% respectively. And we've established a early warning platforms of a flash flood in 2,076 counties. Through a combination of steps, we've been, we've been able to guard against several major floods and severe droughts. Compared with the previous decade, the average annual damage rate, that is the ratio of disaster loss as a share of GDP, dropped from 0.57% to 0.31%, protecting the safety of people's lives and properties. In recent years, we've seen worse levels of droughts and floods, and water conservancy projects have played an important role in guarding against losses resulting from such incidents. In terms of flood control in 2021, the middle and lower reaches of the Yellow River experienced the worst autumn floods since the founding of New China. We at the Ministry of Water Resources launched a systematic coordinated science-based and a very tailored response. We fine-tuned our efforts in the reservoirs and branches of the Yellow River to flatten the peak flow of the flood. And in this way, we spared 1.4 million downstream residents from relocating and preserved 2,660 square kilometers of arable land. In this June, Pearl River experienced severe floodings on two occasions. The one in the Beijing River was the most severe since 1950. Water Conservancy authorities jointly coordinated 37 major reservoirs to stop the floods and flatten the flood peaks. Through decisive measures, we activated 
flood storage area and the floodgates to divert the water flow. As a result, water level and flow rate of important river sections were controlled within the safety range. And we ensure the safety of Xijiang and Beijiang levees and the Guangzhou and Pearl River Delta region. In terms of drought relief, in 2021 and the spring of 2022, Dongjiang and Hanjiang rivers of the Pearl River experienced the worst drought in 60 years. It is an extreme situation. In response to that, the Ministry of Water Resources has made an emergency response plan to draw water to replenish the local reservoirs through multiple tailor-made measures. We were able to replenish in time the river, river levels of Xijiang and Dongjiang of the Pearl River and guaranteed the water supply in the greater in the Hong Kong, Guangdong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. Since this July, the river, the Yangtze Yellow, the Yangtze River Basin experienced a, a dry spell. River level was low. And in response to that, uh, we had the ministry worked to divert rivers, tributaries, divert water in the tributaries to the mainstream to ensure irrigation water supply. As of today, we were able to replenish water in 356 mid to large scale irrigation areas, benefiting 138.5 million people. Thank you. Next question. I would like to ask about uh, water security in China's rural areas. What are the measures and steps taken to safeguard the water security in China's rural regions? The city Central Committee and the State Council attach great importance to rural drinking water safety. Since the 18th Party Congress, the Ministry of Water Resources, in conjunction with other regions, has vigorously implemented rural water supply projects, invested 466.7 billion yuan, solved the problem of drinking water safety for 280 million rural residents, improved the level of water supply security for 340 million rural people, and the rural tap water penetration rate reached 84 percent, an increase of 19 percentage points compared with 2012. The majority of farmers now have access to water. First, we have established a complete engineering system. By the end of 2021, there had been a total of 8.27 million rural water supply projects nationwide, which can serve a population of 900 million people. Second, the battle against the rural drinking water problems has been won. We have ensured drinking water safety for 17.1 million people living in poverty. 
Farmers and herdsmen have used water pipes instead of buckets. Third, we have ended the plague of waterborne diseases. With a probably soft high fluoride water for 9.75 million rural population, the majority of farmers no longer drink high fluoride water or brackish water. Fourth, a sound management responsibility system has been put in place. The local governments, the water administration departments and water supply units have played their due role. Rural centralized water supply projects have been fully priced to promote the long-term operation of the projects to better meet the people's aspirations for a better life. The Ministry of Water Resources will steadily shift our focus from rural drinking water safety to rural water supply security to enhance the quality of our work. First, we will consolidate and expand the achievement of rural water supply to hold the bottom line, strengthen the comprehensive survey and dynamic monitoring of rural drinking water safety and we will zero out drinking water problems on a dynamic basis. Second, we will accelerate the construction of large-scale water supply projects to raise the level. Based on the construction of stable water resources, the construction of large-scale water supply projects and the standardization of small-scale projects will be implemented according to local conditions, and the integration of urban and rural water supply will be promoted where conditions permit. Third, we will launch a campaign to improve water quality. We will accelerate the delineation of raw drinking water protection zones, support the improvement of purification and uh, disinfection facilities, and improve the water quality protection system. Fourth, we will improve long-term management and management mechanism to deliver benefits. Promote, we will promote regional integrated management and professional management of raw water supply and improve the water price formation mechanism. In particular, we will strengthen digital empowerment and realize intelligent water supply. Thank you. I am interested in the overdrawn of groundwater in northern part of China. For historical reasons, the ecological environment of rivers and lakes in North China has been severely damaged, and groundwater there has been seriously overdrawn, which has caused large scale of ground subsidence. As early as March 2014, General Secretary Xi Jinping made specific arrangements for repairing groundwater overdraft and ground subsidence in the northern China plain. The Ministry of Water Resources, together with relevant state council departments and local Government resolutely implement General Secretary Xi Jinping's instructions. And take measures to promote comprehensive management of groundwater over draft, which I sum it up. I use five keywords to sum up our work. 
一是节 First, the first key word is save. That is to strengthen water conservation. Conservation. 需求端的节约用水 In the consumer point. 采取三项措施 And we've、uh, taken three major measures. 节水增效 First, agricultural water conservation and efficiency. Second, industrial water conservation and emission reduction. Third, urban water conservation and loss reduction. The second key word is control. That is to strictly control the scale and intensity of groundwater development. 对于第一用水大户，就是农业。The largest consumer of 修耕 water is agriculture. So we took measures such as crop rotation, fallow development of dry, rain-fed agriculture, 高耗水产业的发展 and water-appropriate planting. At the same time, we strictly control the deploy development of high water consuming industries. The third key word is change. That is to increase water replacement efforts. 就是以地下水为水源的这些产业、这些部门，把它的用水方式换成。We will change the way of using water. For the industries that are using groundwater, we will encourage encourage them to use surface water instead. We made full use of midline of the South North Water Diversion Project, and we increased the East Line supply. Moderately increased the introduction of the Yellow River water. We have combined these efforts with local water and non-conventional water to replace the groundwater mining in various industries. The fourth key word is replenishment. That is to. Carry out ecological replenishment of water in rivers and lakes in North China. For some period, we've seen the disconnection of water in North China in rivers and lakes, which means. There is no replenishment for groundwater there. So, with、uh, thinking a bigger picture, to find ways to replenish the water in North China's rivers and lakes, and in recent years, our ministry have doubled our efforts to replenish the waters in Yongding River. And also in Baiyang Dian, and in the north part of the Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal. Fifth, the fifth key word is management. That is to strictly control groundwater usage. First, is to control the Huaibei Delta Water Catchment Area. We've delineated the prohibited mining areas and restricted mining areas, and we've conducted strict control in these areas, especially in the deep-seated groundwater overdrawn areas. We've closed. The well, wells there, and we've、uh, set up a monitoring system for the usage of groundwater. 
And we've uh, introduced the supervision and evaluation system to ensure the implementation. So the five keywords are safe, control, change, replenishment, and management. Thanks to these efforts, after all these years of treatment, the improvement of water ecological environment in North China has been remarkable. By the end of December 2021, compared with the same, same period in 2018, the shallow groundwater level in the Beijing Tianjin Hebei governance area rose by 1.89 meters overall, and the deep pressurized water level rebounded by 4.65 meters overall. At the same time, in, throughout the years, we've seen a recharged 8 billion cubic meters of groundwater. And the Yungding River, the Chaobai River, the Hutuo River, and many other mother rivers have been opened to water after years of disconnection. The Baiyangdian River has come back to life. The Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal has been opened to irrigation for the first time in a century, converging with the Yongding River. Thank you. To implement the water network throughout China is a major strategic decision of China. So on that basis, what will we do to build a trunk water network to ensure water security? The deployment of China's water resources is imbalanced to build a modernized, high-quality water conservancy infrastructure is an urgent need for China. It bears on China's development and security. We must implement General Secretary Xi Jinping's decision and prioritize networking, completing the network and strengthening the chain. The focus is on major river basins and major water diversion projects, as well as backbone water transmission channels. We will also pay attention to regional river and lake system and water supply projects. The key water resources storage projects also have a role to play. With all these efforts, we will build a national water network that is well-established, safe, reliable, efficient, green, smart, smooth, and orderly to enhance China's water resources coordination, deployment, supply, and strategic storage capacity to provide water security guarantee for the building of a modernized socialist country. We will focus our efforts in four areas. First, we will accelerate the construction of the main skeleton and arteries of the national water network. Bearing in mind the major national strategies, we will base our efforts on the trunks of major rivers and focus on the east-central and west lines of the south-north water diversion project and plan the construction of a number of major cross-basin and cross-regional water diversion projects. 
on basis of the Midline River Diversion Project, we will continue to plan for the follow-up project of the South-North Water Diversion Project for high-quality development of this project. Second, we will improve the regional water resources allocation system Bearing in mind the national, regional, and provincial water security needs, we will strengthen the connection of national and regional water resources allocation projects, advance the connection of regional river and lake systems with water diversion projects, and forge an integrated, interconnected, provincial, municipal, and county-level water network system. Third, we will advance the construction of water transfer, transfer projects. We will fully tap the storage potential of existing water supply projects, accelerate the construction of key water supply projects, and implement small and medium-sized water supply projects to enhance the capacity of urban and rural water supply. Fourth, we will promote the construction of a digital twin water network, harnessing digital scenarios, intelligent simulation, and accelerate decision making. We will promote the construction of digital water networks, intelligent dispatching, monitoring, and early warning automation. Build digital twin water networks with forecasting, early warning, previewing, and pre planning functions and enhance the digital networks and intelligent level of water networks. China's large and medium-sized irrigation areas are the main battlefields to ensure national food production. Since the party 18th Party Congress, China has increased investment in the renovation and construction of large and medium-sized irrigation areas to consolidate the foundation of water resources for food security. And this year's number one document also said that we must increase the renewal and renovation of large and medium-sized irrigation areas to plan for a number of new modern irrigation areas, so what progress has been achieved in this area? Thank you for your question. China boasts long history of irrigated agriculture. Currently, effective irrigated area accounts for 54 percent of total arable land. Nonetheless, they put out over 75% of grain and over 90% of economic crops. So it's safe to say that uh, construction of irrigated farmland is crucial to the steady grain output. Since the 18th CBC National Congress, the State Council and the Party Central Committee has decided to uh, make a 150 billion yuan investment to building irrigated farmlands, and uh, these investments have definitely paid off. The results are shown in the following aspects. The first, We've built a, a complete infrastructure network. There are 7,330 mid to large scale irrigated areas in China. And we built and renewed the water channels and surrounding buildings, pumps, and trenches to support uh, these irrigation areas. The length of water channels amounted to 400,000 kilometers. That's 10 times the length of the equator. 
The second aspect is that we've been able to promote the efficient use of water in the agricultural sector, and especially in irrigation. The efficient use coefficient went up from 0.1.56 to 0.568. In the, in the previous decade, and uh, saving 48 billion cubic meters of water annually. The third aspect is that uh, we've added new irrigation areas and renewed old ones. We added and renewed 40,000 square kilometers of land and curbed the trend of erosion of irrigated arable land. The fourth aspect is that we've uh, trumped up grain production. We've added 30 billion kilograms of grain capacity. The output in the renewed mid to large irrigation area uh, per mool went up 100 kilos. That is Nearly, hot, uh, nearly double the output of uh, unrenewed irrigated areas. Going forward, we at the ministry um, plan to build and renew even more irrigation farmlands in order to protect uh, food security in China. The 14th five-year plan for water science and technology innovation emphasizes the need to enhance the strategic scientific and technological power of water resources. So what progress has been achieved in promoting smart water resources and what are the future considerations? Since the 18th Party Congress, the Ministry of Water Resources has acted on the important instructions of General Secretary Xi Jinping on building, on enhancing cyber strength of China, implemented the Digital China Strategy and integrated the new generation information technology with water resources. Related work. We have made significant progress in the following two aspects. First, we have built a sky land integrated water monitoring and sensing network for timely access to important water information. We have built a national water resources monitoring system and a national network of groundwater monitoring stations. We've built 430,000 water information collection points. A total of 5,186 small and medium-sized rivers with flood control tasks have been fully covered by hydrological monitoring. And the collection and transmission time of rainfall information from 110,000 flood reporting stations has been shortened from hourly to minute level. Second, we've constructed a national water resources map to support flood control and other specific work. A national water resources map 
has been drawn. 镶嵌了五十五类。Bringing together more than 16 million water objects in 55 categories, and this map has been updated timely online with spatial management of rivers, lakes, water facilities, and water management units. Providing accurate support for flood control in basins and water-related emergency response. It serves the implementation of the strictest national water resources system and the national system of river. And lake chiefs. 那么下一步，水利部 Going forward, the Ministry of Water Resources will 需求牵引，应用至上，数字赋能 Act on the principles of demand-driven and application-first approach, digital empowerment and capacity enhancement. Follow the trend of digitization, networking, and intelligence, which is supported by data, algorithm, and computing power. We will use digital scenarios, intelligent simulation, and accurate decision making. To build digital twin basins, digital twin water networks, and digital twin water projects, and to construct a smart water system with forecast, early warning, preview, and planning functions. Which will provide technological support for the overall improvement of national water security capability. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Li and all the panelists for your participation. Thank you.